Sounds good. All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, man, we actually have the one and only. We got the legendary boss from Boston, Massachusetts, man. We got Insight Innovates right here live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? What up, man? What up, what up? What up, listeners, man? I'm good, man. I'm glad to be here, man. And I got to say, I'm glad to have you here, man. I hope everything is all well in Boston. I was hearing news, man, that... You know, you guys are actually pretty much open back up, man. So congratulations on that. It must feel good getting back to normal life. Oh man, yeah, it feels, it feels good to see everybody out, man. And yeah, like we back opened up, man. It, it, it's a little bit surreal, you know, but yeah, it's good. We finally made it. But I want to take you back to the beginning, man. Back when life was pretty much simpler for everybody, man. But I got to ask, what actually made you decide to get into this music, this music tip in the first place, man? Because I got to say, you were you were so organic at what you do, man. You're you're you can tell when you listen to your music that this is exactly what you're here on this earth to do is to make music. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I mean, I I grew up uh, in a house full of musicians, you know, but. My uh, my father's a musician. My, my brothers and sisters. We we started playing the piano. We always have music uh, instruments in the house, you know. So um, it's 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 kind of always been there. But once hip hop, you know, once I went through that hip hop era, um, it just revitalized, you know, making the way that um, I approach making music, you know. And, and in that sense, it was uh, some, something that just you know I always did, and and, and just. I always wanted to do. And also, man, taking you back to 1999, you actually released a phenomenal 12-inch vinyl uh, that had three joints on it, man. True to the Game, uh, Hip Hop, Top Gun, and Universal. I was always wondering, man, what what, what was the story behind that phenomenal, uh, ph- phenomenal vinyl? Because I remember as well that you actually were a producer on that record as well. Yeah, that's true. I, I produce most of my stuff. Like, so, you know, I've, I've always did my own cuts and, and production. Uh, that, that record, that kind of was, you know, that was around the time I released uh, another another album, um, Updated Software. So I had a lot of content, was not really sure what I wanted to put out first. And, you know, and uh, basically when I put that one out, it kind of, it kind of, I thought, I thought the three vibes kind of sh- showcased a, a couple of different styles that I was kind of going for at the time, but um, obviously I did a ton of stuff after that, like updated software, the double, the double CD with, you know, 26 tracks on one, and then it had the, uh, the vocal, you know, album next to it, so, you know, um, that, that, that was a good, I thought it was a good introduction to what I was about to do. And I got, I got to say as well, man, your production work is absolutely phenomenal. And the one thing I've always wondered, just growing up listening to you, man, like what actually made you decide to get into the producing side of the music industry, man? Because, you know, you as a you as an MC is phenomenal, but your production sound is so unique. Oh, man, I appreciate that, man. First of all, thank you for uh, listening, you know. Um, yeah, anyone who's paying attention, thank you for listening. You know, there's, there's so much stuff these days, a lot of... A lot, Good, good artists, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, getting into it, I kind of never really approached it from, hey, I want to rap, or I wanted to hear this beat. Like, I kind of approached it like a composer. I had a idea in my head that I wanted to get out, and I've always thought about the entire sound, like what, what I should be rapping about, what the music should sound like, and, and I just appreciate the end result. So I was always trying to achieve that you know and and, and um, I didn't I didn't really like waiting on any aspect to get done so I would just you know somebody might say oh you can't you can't be a producer you're a rapper or you you rap you can't you can't DJ and I, but I wasn't thinking about what I could and couldn't do I just wanted to reach that end result so um, over the years I just focused on what I could do rather than what I like what, what I couldn't do and just you know, just doing my thing, getting better and better at it, and just, now it's just, I don't think about it. If I want to do something, I approach it with the mindset that it's going to come out, you know, based on whatever I have in my head, and, and it just feels good to create that way, you know? 
And I gotta say as well, you know, a lot of individuals, man, like they, they don't really, when whenever they hear an individual as a DJ, producer, an artist, man, there's not a lot of uh, individuals out there that can do all three. So I think sometimes it it just confuses individuals, like how how do you do what you do? But at the end of the day, man, if you're multi if you're multi talented, man, you might as well just roll with it. I don't know how to put that. I I, I think uh, I mean I'm kind of introverted, you know, and and I I actually am a software engineer. I I found that the same things that I like about putting music together is the same thing I like about putting software together. So I I sit there and work on some algorithms. Uh, right when the mobile started in 2007, I kind of was attaching that to what I did with music to deliver things in a different way. So I started way before, you know, I had some of the first VSTs and music, uh, you know, software that was out. Um, but that just to say, I'm, I just go into my mind, man. I just do what my mind, I, I try to become one with my, my, my thoughts. And, and, and uh, music is, and being creative is a good way to tap into your inner spirit, you know. And, and that's all I think about. I'm not thinking about competing. I'm not thinking about being validated or you know, reaching any audience, I'm really tapping into what I love doing, and doing that, I don't, I, I don't think about it in terms of uh, whether I'm rapping or producing or, or, or what, I'm just thinking, how can I achieve this, this uh, particular sound that's going to give you this particular feeling, and can I improve that? So, I think that's a good way, especially in a, set, in a time where, like, a lot of cats tend not to be, you can listen to some music, it tends to be sound and force or not sincere, or someone has something to, tr to prove, that's all good. But for me, man, it, you know, I, I just give you what what I feel. It's just one hundred percent me. I'm, I'm definitely not trying to compete with anyone. I'm just I'm trying to give you something that's good and pure, just that real hip hop spirit, um, the essence of the the truth and sincerity. And also as well, man, in the early 2000s, uh, leading right up to now, you've actually done a substantial amount of work with an indiv with an individual by the name of Mr. Uh, Mr. Liff, uh, uh, Mr. Life Story. I was wondering, how did yourself and him get connected, man? And of course, what was it like just actually working alongside him? Because you guys have had some phenomenal collaborations together. Uh, Liff actually used to come to my studio way early when I, before I was doing anything, and he, he actually convinced me to just hit, hit up, like, brick with some of the work that I had, because I, I tend to just, I'll just keep on creating things and not really, um, you know, just t t some of the, what typical artists might do is just keep their music, and, and, and um, meet, meeting him was cool because, you know, Liz kind of already had his lane way back when I started and kind of convinced me to kind of just put a lot of stuff out there that, that I had. So, um, yeah, and over the years we did we did a lot of stuff on on, uh, on some, some of his early records. So it's, it's good, you know, it's good to work with him. Um, and, you know, I still I still talk to Liv, so, you know, it, it's, it's good that we had, uh, you know, made a lot of dope music from way back in the day. And and we still kind of connected today, so it's 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 dope to be able to have it like that. And I still remember one of the collaborations that you guys did. I believe it was on his uh, Enters the Colossus album. I believe the song was uh, Pulse Cannon. Man, still one of my absolute favorites that you guys actually did together. Interesting. You, you know what's funny about that is like, uh, yeah, I was in a particular vibe then, like where I, I feel like I didn't put enough of that style out. But I was in this vibe, man. I would just sample like uh, explosions and noises and just crazy chaotic sounds and just do, you know, just do music on it. It's just like this rebellious attitude and approach to, to hip hop. Um, and and yeah, I love, I, yeah, I love that joint. I, I like doing, I like doing, you know, edgy joints like that, and then also releasing it at the right time, like people are not considering that kind of stuff. So yeah, man, thank, thank you for listening to that joint. And also as well, you were actually signed to the Boston-based hip-hop label, uh, Brick Records, man. I was wondering, how did that record deal come to be for you back in the day? And of course, what was it like working uh, with that imprint so early on in your amazing career? Uh, it was more like, you know, uh, a lot of us was, you know, friends and this, they actually was already putting a ton of records out for the scene um, in, in Boston. I think Brick does, 
get enough credit for like cultivating the scene that in the way that they did. A lot of artists that came out of Boston started, you know, uh, doing stuff through them, uh, and the distributed that they're affiliated with. Um, so just basically just working with them was very free, man. It's just like I would just have music done, and just we would, they, I would just turn it in, and they would say, "Oh, this is dope. Let's do it." You know, their 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 motto was just not giving a fuck since '96, and they, they really did. They, we just we just you know created stuff that we thought people would want and just put it out, and they was always down with it. So I still roll with them today. You know what I mean? That's kind of how it was, and 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 you know, at this point, I've known them cats for like over over two decades. You know, so they 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 haven't changed. It's still about making the dope hip hop and and um. Yeah, man, that's all. That's all to it. It was never. It was never really about getting signed to this company or that company because I was kind of always doing my thing. But they was always with it to put stuff out, and they always like you know was into whatever I was creating. So yeah, man, I stick with the people that have faith and that that, that are loyal to me, and and, and um, yeah, I, I love them cats still, man. They my people. So. And also, as well, aside from your solo career, you were actually a member of a Shin Sight Trio. I was wondering, what's the story behind that iconic group? And of course, how did you actually get connected with the other two members? Interesting. So I had a group before that called Electric, which I put together with five MCs. It was uh, Radio Raheem, Anonymous, Dagger, Mo Pope. We had a group uh, with five of us. Um, and then Shin... He's my peeps out in Japan, and then, you know, um, basically, we used to collaborate, and uh, so from there, I, I ended up, everybody kind of went on to their solo albums, and then like, me and Shin ended up wanting to do, like, a more um, jazzy feel, because in that time, like, Japan was on some jazzy hip-hop shit, so we kind of got together, and then DJ Royo and put, put together, like, Shin Sight Trio to kind of... Um, achieved that where I wasn't making the beat. So that was like, I would say that was one of the first records where I didn't produce it. Like every other record I produced, besides that one and also an album uh, with this other cat, Don with the Fudge one. But, but yeah, that's how that album came together, man. I mean, we, Shane approached me to do um, an album and then he had a DJ um, and I was tight with them cats and Bad News Records put the, the records out and kind of, I stayed out in Japan for like a year and did a bunch of stuff um, and we ended up doing like four albums um, we were supposed to do another one but you know that's still up in the air and I gotta say, man, my, my favorite record is always uh, Shallow Nights and Blurry Moon, man. I, th I think when you guys came together, man, even on that first record, you could really hear your guys' chemistry throughout that entire record. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that that first record was kind of um, definitive of kind of the style that we was approaching when we kind of made the group. So, with that, yeah, it definitely kind of laid the groundwork for that particular sound. And I was wondering as well with that particular record, because I do know it's 2006, so, like, I know that was right around the time when, you know, stuff was starting to go digital, like, you kind of had, like, the ringtones and whatnot going around. I, I was wondering, did that album ever get uploaded to Spotify or anything like that? Like, is it still out there to be listened to today, or, or do you have to, like, search, like, Discogs or, or eBay to try to find yourself a copy? <laughs> Yeah, that stuff, that stuff, I, I actually did have a deal for that record, and it was limited to Japan, so, um, which was funny, I had, a, I did another album around that time with the same label uh, called Solo Plexus, where I did the voices of seven, uh, six MCs, that album came out, a lot of people don't know that that's also me, but um, I didn't want to say that it was me, because it would kind of spoil the, the trick of the album, um, but yeah, it was around the same time. Uh, and it and it only released in Japan, so um, you can find it if you can. You know, let me know because I don't I, I don't have a copy of some of them stuff either. <laughs> Especially when it's out in Japan, though, too. Like it's some, some though, Japan they love old school hip hop, man. Like I've heard stories that they go crazy over it. So they probably have that like probably locked in a safe or something like that, man. They're probably not never going to get rid of that. Yeah, it depends hip-hop man I mean even when you know the hip-hop scene uh, 
hip hop wasn't so uh, you know accessible as it is now. They you know they was supporting hard. You know I did so so many shows and tours out there, and anytime I'd go to Japan, they they show love. I I mean I showed up for uh, one spot like about two three hours late, and the crowd was just waiting. And, you know, and nightgowns and just it was just and, and, and you know just night. night <laughs> like pajamas and shit and it, it just turned into a whole different thing it's just like it's dope the support is, is ridiculous over there and also as well man in 2011 yourself and uh count uh sorry count base d man actually teamed up to actually create the album the risk takers i was wondering uh how did yourself and him get connected and of course what was it like just working in the studio creating risk takers uh, we actually, Count and I met up, I don't even know when, I think I met Count in person while I was living in Europe, um, but other than that, most of the album we put together in different places, you know, he was out of state, I was out of state, we were sending files back and forth, you know, before it was even common to be doing that, so... I mean, but it, it was easy. It was pretty easy to put together everything. I mean, I had, I kind of already had, like, the tracks put together and kind of had parts, and I would just send them stuff, and he would send it back. Um, and and Aesthetic Music put put that out, the label in, in France. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. I'm still tight with Count as well. Um, who did, who did a, you know, he did a lot of joints with, with Doom, uh, rest in peace, but... Um, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward, man. And I gotta say as well, man, the, the internet is like a blessing, but it's also a curse at the same time. But just being able to work with individuals and actually be able to send files halfway across the world and create such an amazing record like that, man, is you, you just you just you you got you gotta love the internet, but sometimes you gotta hate it as well. I know you can't let the internet control you, um, but like now, you know, it tends to be. A lot of stuff is so easy, you tend to want to kind of stay in tune with what everybody's doing and feel like you should be doing it. But, um, yeah, it's good to keep yourself in check with the screen time and everything. Um, I, I like to have a, some kind of agenda if I'm going to be doing too much online. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I just try to keep it moving. And also, this year, man, on May 28th of 2021, you released your most recent album, a nine-track collaboration with uh, fellow Boston, Massachusetts legend, Ed O.G. I was wondering, uh, how did yourself and Ed get connected? And of course, where can our listeners actually snag themselves a copy of Ed O.G. and Insight Innovates? I mean, I go way back. Like, I've known Ed, like, it's a seven or something like that. His his cousin lived in the same building uh, where, you know, I grew up. Um, and then, you know, I used to go over there and would be there. This was, like, before we actually started collaborating. But then years later, we we kind of met up, did did a couple songs. I was on, uh, I, he, he was on my album on Blast Radius, which is, that was kind of my, like, debut album. Um where I was like rapping and producing, so he was on there with with uh, AG and 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 then I did a couple of joints on his album. Um, I produced this joint, Wish It, with Master Ace and and, and Edo. Um, and then we talked about doing the album, but it was it wasn't for years where we actually got up to the studio. I, we went on tour actually with Master Ace, Edo G, uh, hot, long hot summer tour, 2004. After that, we got tighter. We started like. You know, we were just staying in touch, and, and and right now I thought it was a good time to do it before I do my solo album. Um, and and uh, the best place to cop it, I mean, you could go to my website, which is insideinnovates.com, and, you know, the link's there, or you can find it on any streaming platform. And also as well, directly after this interview, man, for the for the individuals that haven't had the opportunity to sit back and listen to this phenomenal record, I'm actually going to be playing one of my personal favorite joints off the record, uh, actually titled Never Too Late to Correct. But but uh, since I listened to it, but I know some of the listeners might not have, so if you can, what can they actually expect from this song when they hear it right after this, right after this interview? Oh, man, it's a sincere track, man, a straight-up hip-hop joint about how it's never too late to correct mistakes, man. You can always 
change your decisions to change what you do, there's always hope that things could be improved. You know, so that's kind of what that song is about. And when you listen, just listen to the fact, listen to the sincerity of it. We're not in there uh, kicking some 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 nonsense. It's just you know straight beats and just you know conscious hip hop. You know, um, that's that's what that album is about. It was just that's it. You know what I mean? Um, felt like that, you know, hip hop kind of needed that at the time, and that's that's kind of what we created. So I hope I hope heads like it. If you do, you know, like it, share it, you know, join, find me on Instagram or wherever, and then stay tuned for more because you know Brick's gonna put out the the, the new joint that uh, I'm a, I'm gonna a hit him with soon. And I have to ask you, man, other than your new solo project that you're working on, what is next for your self-insight, man? Because I already know that, you know, you're a very busy individual, whether it's DJing, producing, or being an MC. So I was wondering, is there anything else we missed? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? What would stop you here live on the Canadian radio station Airwaves? Oh, man, there's so much I want to say. I mean, well, I got I got an album coming out with aesthetic music. Just, just stay tuned. Go to the Instagram, man, because... There's a lot of updates. There's just not enough time to cover it in this section. Uh, I do have some more in West with Edo. I got some some projects with the way I'm producing other cats. These these cats Dunners with this this cat Oak Lone Tree and 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 this dude D's. Um, and my man Price is coming with an album. I mean, I got a lot of stuff. But me and my man Sun Dude's working on stuff. It's just a lot of a, a lot of joints. You know what I mean? So. Definitely stay tuned. Go to the website, like I said, www.insightinnovates.com, or check me out on Instagram. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. Stay tuned for the new album. And if you haven't heard it, go. If you want to check some throwback joints? Go, go back and listen to Blast Radio. And then after that, you know, check out the Head on Insight Innovates. You know, and stay tuned, man. Just I appreciate the the um, the ears and uh, the attention. And thank you. And also, man, quickly before we part ways, I was wondering if you can drop your social media handles, man. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated. Everything, Insight Innovates, if they're not already doing so. Yeah, man, the social media handle for Instagram is insight.innovator. Um, and then other than that, if you, if you hit me up on the web, a lot of cats don't have websites, but this makes it easy. Just go to insightinnovates.com. Or insight.fm. And then that, you know, from there you can find me anywhere. And I got to say, Insight, thank you so much, man, for just giving us years of amazing music and also just giving us a little bit of your time this evening, man. I got to say, it definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege to welcome you on my radio station, Airwaves. And I really hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Definitely. You've been listening to Insight Innovation. <laughs> we'll make it happen soon, man. Hey, man, most definitely. Every so wonderful night out there in Boston, man. Thank you so much again. You too. Take care, man. Take care. Be safe.